Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Sunday, the 8th of July, 2018. Let's take a look at what's happening out there first up with Barrel, which is now pretty much an open tropical wave, although it still has a very well-defined low-level center, and you can see that very clearly right there approaching the island of Dominica and the center of circulation and it looks like an eye I mean it technically does uh, it's a hole right there in the middle may go right over Dominica later on interesting that Maria did that last year and now we have this system here barrel following sort of a similar path but way 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 less intense that being said you can tell by the overall disorganized appearance of this system the impacts are going to be minimal however for the folks around these areas that were impacted by Irma and Maria any gusty winds showers and maybe some thunderstorms some of that squally weather where the rain blows horizontal for a little bit lashing against the window uh, you know blowing some loose debris around that still may be out there it's going to rattle some nerves because last year was pretty traumatic for people that had to deal with dual category five hurricanes so uh, i'm with you i understand so you know even though this is not probably going to even be classified as a tropical storm as it goes through the name and the technical textbook classification won't matter much because you're going to get some of these squalls like this band here and then you can see there's a nice thunderstorm complex that has popped up there and even some of the lightning imagery uh, the image gathering capabilities of the GOES 16 picks up lightning and there is some lightning in there in that northern part of the circulation so this will pass very close to if not right over Dominica and then into the Eastern Caribbean Sea and so the rest of our friends up here from Guadeloupe to Montserrat Barbuda Antigua up here and then up off the top of the screen we do have the uh, St. Bartolome, St. Martin, Anguilla, St. Kitts, Nevis, you know, you're going to have some squally weather, but it's not going to be a large, big problem like you had last year. And you don't need me to tell you that. I'm just trying to put your mind at ease, but also just keep in mind, this is a larger weather system than you are. All right. So just because you went through Cat 5 hurricanes last year, don't look at these systems and then head out on your small boat or whatever and say, that's eh, nothing. And then you get stopped uh, by a downdraft 45 knot wind that tips your boat over. Okay, still respect the fact that this is there, but don't worry about it too much. The decoupling of the center of circulation here now moving very quickly. Remember how I was remarking and how slow it was moving, relatively speaking. I mean, I'm used to seeing tropical waves moving 25 miles per hour across the deep tropics in July and not until recently has this been moving that fast so what it has done a couple things here the center of circulation outrunning any limited convection that was left upper level winds are starting to sort of tear things apart it's just a mishmash of patterns coming together here some dry air lower humidity the water temperatures are warm enough now that's for sure but the overall environment's just not very good, and this system's starting to really uh, unravel, which is great news. But still, it'll be kind of a, I don't want to say a rough night, but not the best of nights. Let's just put it that way. And then this will pass on into the Eastern Caribbean Sea, probably south of Puerto Rico, but some of that northern extent of this sharp wave of low pressure could bring some squalls through Puerto Rico maybe the US Virgin Islands as well and overall over the next few days it looks like this will pass the remnant energy across the greater Antilles and then somewhere into the southwest Atlantic where maybe it'll try to regenerate if conditions allow somewhere in this vicinity that's a possibility as for any possibility of this getting into the Gulf of Mexico I will stand by my never say never rule but I'll say that for this to go into the Gulf uh, and make it even past 80 degrees longitude I would say there's a 99% chance that will not happen and so I'm 99% confident that anybody in the Gulf of Mexico 
doesn't have to worry. Let's just put it another way. Everybody doesn't have to worry about this in the Gulf, in my opinion. Uh, tropical wave barrel, you don't see that very often, but the uh, automated modeling system and naming system is picking up on the fact that it no longer has a well-defined low-level circulation, certainly no convection around it. Nevertheless, the guidance, this here, you say, oh, Mark, what about that? Brings it back to a hurricane. Well, that is the sort of climatology and persistence version of the ship's model, and you can just throw it out. Don't even worry about it. It's not worth it. Now, the ship's model itself, a statistical, fairly simple model, keeps it as a tropical storm for a while, but, again, this is kind of simple as compared to the dynamical models, which mostly drop it in about 36 hours. Look at that. It's almost, bam, right off the edge of the cliff, and there you go. So none of the major global models, none of the high-resolution hurricane-specific models, the H-Wharf, et cetera, develop this again. Uh, but we'll watch it and see. You just never know. You never say never, and we're going to hear that a lot around here. So let's move on to Chris off the coast of North Carolina. Uh, really nice animation here from weathernerds.org. And I am literally right in here in the Wilmington area. And so you've got a couple of things happening, some uh, you know, outer edge circulation trying to pass through eastern North Carolina, indirectly related to Chris, but the bulk of the convective activity well offshore. You still have this front that's hung up and stalled out. So the frontal boundary, the difference between the two air masses, and you can see that, I mean, can you guess? Moist, humid, warm here, drier, and less humid and warm there. And so that boundary is still there, even though the upper level trough part has left. And we'll talk about that towards the end. I saw a question on our chat at our Hurricane Track Insider site asking, why did the trough not take it with it? Well, I'm going to show you why in just a few minutes. But let's take a look at what's happening. Overall, the structure looking better. And this is going to be a hurricane, it looks like. It's still kind of attached overall to the frontal boundary, but it is tropical. It's just part of this overall larger feature sitting over the western Atlantic. And once it fully separates from that, and you can even see, too, some of these uh, cloud tops moving off fairly quickly. So there's still some westerly shear impacting the system. And once all of this changes and the pattern itself changes, Chris will be able to take advantage of some very warm water that's sitting out here. Uh, the Gulf Stream, a moving channel of warm water. And this is more than likely going to become a hurricane. So where is it headed? It will uh, certainly, 99% uh, sure, this will not impact the east coast of the U.S. directly. You know, from Wilmington to Hatteras up to Cape Cod, 99% sure. You know, 95% sure, nothing for Maine or southwest Nova Scotia. But from there, as the modeling shows you, and this is where it's just obvious, it looks like a close call to parts of Nova Scotia and maybe direct impacts for Newfoundland. So the Canadian Maritimes up here, even though the water temperatures are cold, this will be accelerating. And so you will have the potential of some very heavy rain and a spreading out wind event as it transitions from a tropical cyclone to a more mid-latitude cyclone and bringing some you know, rather inclement weather perhaps to parts of the Maritimes up there. But water temperatures are cold enough to keep it from being a warm core, solid hurricane. Uh, but you guys are used to that up there. You've seen these in the past. doesn't mean that they're good, but you know, it's not like it's completely alien to you. Uh, and we'll see how this evolves over the next few days. Some of the modeling is a little weird. The European, I noticed, and I'm going to show you this in a minute, doesn't quite get it out here. It kind of moves it south and then takes it off. Uh, until we see it moving northeast, I, I don't want to say anything can happen because people say that too often, and it's not true. It's not like anything can happen. That, that implies total chaos and randomness, and generally speaking, the atmosphere is not that wacky. But until it starts moving northeast, let's just you know keep a close eye on it. There will be... Uh, some substantial impacts, especially as this continues to intensify. 
for the coastal areas in terms of rip currents, rough surf, high surf. Surfers, per se, experienced boarders will enjoy this, but they still have to be careful, obviously. Inexperienced swimmers, tourists, kids, everybody. Everybody else that's not an experienced surfer, just stay out of the water except maybe a little bit past your ankles. Between the ankles and the knees, other than that, if you start venturing out waist deep, you're going to start getting into some trouble. I'm serious. We've already had one fatality up in Kill Devil Hills yesterday, and it's totally preventable. You see the red flags, stay out of the water. If you want to go in up to, like, like I said, halfway up to your knees, right where the waves are coming up on the beach, fine. But swimming out in the ocean where it's chest deep and beyond especially, please don't, seriously. It, it could put a lot of stress on your family in more ways than I want to talk about here. Looking at the uh, rainfall, really not much going on here, maybe in the Outer Banks. An occasional passing shower, but that's about it. National Weather Service chart, I wanted to show you this. Tropical storm warnings and hurricane warnings offshore, certainly, but that's for the offshore interests. Gulf Stream, people going out, which hopefully they aren't, but the offshore waters, yes, there are warnings in place, but those are the offshore waters, not the near shore or onshore, uh, per se. All right, and we can see that here, just you know, your coastal zones uh, along the Outer Banks proper, high surf, rip current statements all the way down into the beaches of New Hanover and Pender counties. Uh, be very, very mindful of this. We're talking life-threatening rip currents. Not kidding about it. The death yesterday is a direct result of that. So please take it very, very seriously. Again, in the offshore waters, yes, tropical storm warning, but that's out here in the offshore coastal zones, not for right against the land because tropical storm conditions, not expected for the coastal beaches, as an example, nor Pamlico or Albemarle Sounds. All right, so here's what I wanted to show you relating to why, uh, a couple of things, why the first trough didn't get it, and also, here it is right here, this is the 500 millibar chart. Why isn't it going to impact uh, North Carolina directly? Why can't it just come on back? So this will take me a minute here to explain this, but it's, it's fascinating and it's a great question. Uh, <clears throat> Outer Banker, that's what he's known as on our chat and on Storm 2K. So here's your answer. So this is the current setup, this is our zero from the 12Z GFS, the initial conditions. 500 millibars in the atmosphere, so roughly 18,000 feet up. And this is a good layer to look at for steering. There's other ways to look at it, but this is what I prefer. And what we're seeing, think of this uh, height line, that's what it's called, as a large balloon in the atmosphere. And it's filled with, you know, uh, water, let's say, water balloon. And here's another one over the Atlantic. In between is this trough of low pressure that dug in and the system was in its formative stage. So this is kind of like your magnet and it just didn't dig in enough or sharply enough to the west to pull it out like that. So the heights in the atmosphere like a topographic map uh, rise and fall. And they do in a topo map but it takes eons for that to happen usually. And so what we see the trough just wasn't strong enough because of this ridge sitting over here uh, in the time of year that it just didn't dig far enough south to induce a northeast track. I mean, it's pretty much as simple as that. The energy came in and it left, and then Chris really developed after the fact, if you think about it. So it was fairly shallow early on, so the trough really couldn't influence it too much. Now that it is getting deeper into the atmosphere, itself being reflected by this vorticity that you can see, it's in between these ridges. So it's stuck. There's really nowhere for it to go. So why not, why doesn't it just drift back to the coast or come north? Well, there's really nothing acting on it right now. And if we move through these frames, you can see that. See? But notice, too, how this height line, 594 height line, is expanding with time. I'm going to leave it what it looks like right now. See how this gets larger? And it finally creeps over so that it's offshore, just offshore of North Carolina. 
Chris just can't go in there. This area of air is less dense than this air. It's, that's the simple way to put it. There's a lot more physics involved than that. But that's the way I look at this. This is a big mountain of air, high pressure in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. And Chris is a low pressure area. Uh, and it just doesn't dent into or go into a 500 millibar ridge like that. And so the flow around this part of the ridge, you see here, I don't, this is just some uh, upper level low in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. Really, you know, pay no attention to it, I guess. Uh, maybe, you know what, though, if this wasn't there, then this might hook over the top, and then Chris does come back. I guess it is important. I didn't think about that. But nevertheless, this is over here, so Chris can't just go east, and so it just kind of sits here, and it waits for something to act on it. So if we keep moving along uh, through the frames, and the, the highs, of course, they fluctuate throughout the day, uh, each day. And then this other piece of energy comes down, as you see right here, there it is, and it lowers your heights again, knocking and eroding this ridge away, and it allows this system, Chris, to get dislodged and start its trek on out into the Atlantic. So if we just put this on into motion from there, that's exactly what happens. And I'm pretty close to it with my line there, kind of anticipating. But you see, it's moving along in the stream flow. And it can't go west because there's too much resistance to the west. It can't go east, so it's just kind of stuck. And if we get rid of my telestration, you can see that. We'll put it in a glorious motion, speed it up, and you'll really see how that works. Isn't that neat? Fluid dynamics for you. And yeah, right there at the end, you can see it right there. That is barrel trying to make a little bit of a comeback, but I wouldn't worry about it too much at this point in time. Chris goes up across the Maritimes of Canada, perhaps. This is five days, by the way. And uh, so there you go, a little bit of my explanation as to why it didn't get picked up by that first trough, whereas the second one, as you can clearly see, the heights are much lower, farther to the south, and it's enough to scoop Chris up and yank it on up towards the Maritimes. Alrighty? So it's interesting we can look at a little lower in the atmosphere, the 850 millibar level, or 5,000 feet on the Euro from the same time frame. This is the initial map. We only get 24-hour images here. Uh, so 24 hours from today, so we're talking Monday morning there. Tuesday morning, like I said, it's just kind of weird. It moves it southwest and then starts to take it off to the northeast after that. Off it goes. And you can see a little bit of a reflection of energy there from leftover barrel. Uh, not too worried about it yet. So I can't make that go away. Come on, get out of there. So interesting that the, um, the Euro you know, has that weird, we'll just go back initial map, south southwest a little bit up oh, then it gets out of here so you know weird things can happen the longer Chris sits there maybe something else will change but I think the GFS has a good handle on it maybe the European is just lacking at the moment I don't know odds are this heads out to sea recapping biggest hazards rip currents rough seas high surf advisory etc please be careful out there again you folks down in the islands uh, Lesser Antilles and beyond. Tonight, barrel will come through, little fanfare, and then it'll be gone, and you can resume your summer with no worries. <clears throat> I don't see anything else brewing, and we'll go over that in more detail tomorrow. Remember, Monday is usually the bigger day of the week, especially when things are quiet, uh, but things aren't quiet, so tomorrow's update will probably be a half hour. So bring a good book, <laughs> and you can listen while you read. I'm just trying to be funny there. I'm done for today, though. Thanks for tuning in. I am Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. I uh, really do appreciate your time and attention. The YouTube channel really growing over 12,000 subscribers now. If you are a new subscriber, I'll let you know real quick that I am on Patreon, and a lot of these YouTube creators are turning to Patreon as a way to have support in the long term. You know, you can get, uh, for those that have millions of subscribers, they can make a revenue stream off of the ads. But for those of us that aren't there yet, it's nice to have direct support, and we can grow some really neat things from that. So, yep, I'm on Patreon. Circle it for you real quick right there. Also on Twitter, at Hurricane Track. And subscribe, you know, subscribe, hit the subscribe button, 
and be sure to enable notifications because when I post an update, you'll be notified on whatever device you choose. And I think it's neat too, by the way, more and more people watching this on smart TVs. That's pretty cool. All right, again, MarkSuttethHurricaneTrack.com. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with more for you starting tomorrow.